What would you have done if you were a reporter on that scene? Let's take it to the agitators. WCCB News Edge contributor Ashley Anderson, comedian QCB from WFNZ Sports Radio, and welcome a new panelist tonight, Charlotte attorney, defense attorney Adam Seifer. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Um, Ash, as a reporter yourself, yeah. what do you think about that scene, and what would you have done? Yeah, that's a tricky question, right? So if I'd been on the scene and my producer said go in, I would go in, absolutely. You can't be the only reporter or photographer on that scene and not go in. However, I had a huge problem with the fact that the, the reporters were broadcasting live. I think there's nothing wrong with going in, gathering the, the evidence, the facts, the video, um, you know, video evidence, but that's, you know, that's what we spend all day working on stories here to filter out what's not relevant, what's not important, to um, offer the facts, to offer what is relevant to the viewers. And by going live, I felt that was so irresponsible and it wasn't journalism. All right, Q, the FBI director, James Comey, said today that he saw that video. He said, I think I'm neither unhappy nor happy. When we are done with a location, we return it to the rightful owners, and we have to leave an inventory under the law of what was taken so people got to see our great criminal justice system in action. Well, I, I don't have a problem with uh, what happened because if I was a journalist out there, I would have went in myself because when you commit a terrorist act as such as they did, heinous as it was, all bets off. I don't hear about journalistic integrity or nothing like that. I'm going in there because I want to know what compelled someone. I may be able to find something, a clue or anything, a journal, anything, any type of evidence that could help me, you know, with the case or help me be a better reporter, uses my newscast later on and no one else got, I got from snooping around, so I don't have a problem with I it. hope a reporter did not find anything that could help this case. I hope the feds have it. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Adam, as an attorney, as sure. a defense attorney in particular, right. when you see this, if you were representing the family of these people, what sort of concerns might you have? Well, it's basic contamination of a crime scene. I mean, I've heard conflicting reports on whether or not they were done with the investigation at the at the house. I, I didn't see anything related to that that, that they'd um, gone for fingerprints. Well, this or was a New like York that. Times article that I was uh, right. citing from FBI Director sure. James Comey. So okay. we have to take it as as sure. true. And I've seen spokespeople also saying that they were shocked by it and that they weren't done with it. Right. So I don't know what's what. But at the same time, the shooting was two days ago. There could be other soon. Yeah, there, there could be other suspects, and yeah. so just who knows. Um, that was what could have been contaminated? You have kids running around in there, apparently, and the public walking in. Yeah. That was important to note also. Um, the reporters were not inside the garage where the, the pipe bomb making was going on. They were inside the actual living area. Um, I don't know if that makes anybody feel any differently about it, but it is something to note. I just was curious. I mean, you know, they were trying to go through all this uh, electronic uh, information to see if they were talking with other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to have to look for fingerprints and, right. and DNA, and, and if there was a trace of someone else in that apartment, I just don't see how they could possibly have, have done that so soon. Is that possible? I mean, it's certainly possible, but, I mean, they just... They went through it. They rummaged through it. They were posting personal information of people who Social could be suspects. Social security cards, I mean, could be suspects, licenses. could just be random people, yeah. and they're not realizing there could be real life implications for those people who now are posted out there, and now everybody's going to see them and think, mm -hmm. oh, they're a suspect. Or yeah. um, there's a lot of implications for what happened. I think Ashley, your point is is one that's well received and that a lot of people agree with. That yeah, you go inside, you get the story, you take your cameras, and you do your job as a reporter because that's what the job is. Mm -hmm. um, sure. But that the live element of it was right. where it sort of went off the rails. So mm -hmm. what, what's the problem doing it live? Like, what is it you're going to see? Because the crime was already committed. We all know that. So you what's... see somebody's social security number or the photos of the child who needs the oh, baby. Okay. And in particular, I mean, so... there was an anchor who had a reporter in there, and she was talking with the anchor, and she told them, do not show the child again. And they came on Too the air though, and yeah. apologized mm -hmm. and said, we should not have shown the child. The child had nothing to do with this, and the child does have rights. Well, yeah, but we also seen reporters lose their life live on camera. So it's watching a steal photo that's not, or watching that wasn't, those... that was a still That wasn't terrorism. That wasn't an active crime scene. Those are apples and oranges. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's not. I just yeah. don't see that. I mean, I don't see what's the, what's the harm in doing live a live newscast. You may run, run across a baby photo or social security card when we see much things happen worse on live newscasts. That's what I'm coming okay. from. Okay. Yeah. That and makes the sense. problem that you have in now, you know, today's day and age with the internet and Twitter and all these things is everyone's looking for everything to be instantaneous. Right. Yeah. Um, that minute, if you don't get it that minute, it's almost like you lost the scoop. But you're sacrificing right. uh, quality, quality, quality credibility. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
integrity in some Nobody cases. remembers who got it first. They remember who got it right. Or yeah. who got it right. wrong. Or who got it wrong. Right. Who got it wrong. It just yeah. seems like we're protecting these, these horrible human beings who did a, a heinous crime. That's what I'm that. saying. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I get that. So whether it's live or not, we, we shouldn't matter what we find in there. I mean, it could, And I, to your point, I don't think yeah. that it was about my issue is not protecting the people who did this. Yeah. My issue is about Number one, the kid. Excuse yeah. me, I'm not getting emotional. I just have a <laughs> cough right now. The kid, the six month old baby who had nothing course, to do with this, course. who still has rights. Right. And the Good FBI person. part of this that if they need to go back to this, this scene at some point, anybody needs to go back to right. this scene at some point for crime related purposes, investigation related purposes, it's now tainted. Right. Well, if somebody needs to lose lost. their job there, right? guess yeah. who gave the media the pass? I is open season, going in with your cameras and right. do it. That guy needs to be held accountable, or that person. Well, the landlord, she. I mean, it's his property. He can sure. do what he wants with it. That's what, that's what makes it such an interesting and, and difficult topic to talk about.